Breaking news right now, a Middle East, we're watching live pictures here. It is 748 in the evening there. Israel military carrying out uh, strikes in southern Lebanon, but also significant one in Beirut that may have taken out a top Hezbollah commander. Also today, the U.S. and the Pentagon announcing just a short time ago, breaking at this hour, that they are sending additional troops to the Middle East. Uh, this is according to Pentagon Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder. No details on how many forces or what they are tasked to do. Currently, the U.S. has about 40,000 troops in the region, but these new deployments are after the significant strikes by Israel against targets inside Lebanon. This all started again last week as we saw those exploding pagers now, and it has escalated, and it looks to be a significant success for uh, Israel. Pleased to bring in former CIA analyst Fred Flight. Uh, Fred, pleasure to have you. Good to see you. Good to be here. So we're sending in more troops. Uh, the ones that are there are sitting ducks. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, by the way, it's announced that Joe Biden, you know, not only is he uh, on the world stage, he's also making time to go on The View this week, Fred. I, it, all of this, the optics, to me, if you're Iran, you're sitting there, you're saying this vacuum in the, in the West here continues to be um, something that they are going to try and take advantage of. Despite losing Hezbollah leaders, they will never stop. I think that's right. Uh, look, the, the uh, Biden-Harris administration wants to claim it's doing something so it's sending more troops to the region for some reason. They're not going to get involved in this fight in Lebanon or in Gaza. And even Biden officials have admitted that Joe Biden will have no role whatsoever in Middle East peace for the end of his presidency. What's interesting about this Israeli attack on Hezbollah is that it really is undermining the credibility of Iran's main terrorist proxy. Beforehand, the general understanding was that if Israel ever attacked Iran or attacked another Iran ally, Iran would retaliate with Hezbollah. But now Hezbollah is being destroyed and may not be a credible or even capable proxy for Iran in the future. And I think this actually undermines Iran's capability to be a rogue state and to be a threat to Israel. Yeah, it's so significant. Um, the pagers that were exploding, what a, a kinetic type of warfare that the IDF used. There's this um, head commander, um, Ali Karaki. According to Lebanese media, they're reporting right now he's been eliminated. If that is the case, and you're talking about, you know, Hezbollah being um, really not just crippled with communications, but now losing top leadership. They've already said they've got two more members eliminated um, this morning. The death toll is the deadliest um, since 2006 in Lebanon. But we also have to know that there's Hamas and there's the Houthis. So um, Iran uh, may be taking some hits here. But at the end of the day, Fred, um, this situation in the Middle East is far from one that seems to be settling down. If anything, it seems to be heating up under Biden-Harris. I think that's right. And Israel is trying to promote its security by establishing Israeli deterrence because American deterrence has eroded so badly because of the incompetence and weakness of the Biden administration and, and the, the, the perceived weakness of, of Joe Biden as a weak and mentally uh, incapable commander in chief. And I think that's led to all kinds of opportunities for America's adversaries. You're right, these other terrorist groups are there. I think the security situation is going to be bad until Donald Trump returns to the presidency, hopefully in January. If he doesn't, if Kamala Harris comes in, I'm very worried what will happen because she will be seen as a much less serious, much weaker president than Biden.